My name is George Freekan from the Lights on Data Show, live here at Data Citizens, Colibra's hey community event. Hi, Sane, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, a little bit chilly. You're wearing a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's right. December. <laughs> I'm inside, <laughs> but I mean, it's a little bit chilly in Toronto. It is, it is. Okay, I want to get right into the deep end of it. Yeah. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions with AI that business leaders make that you wish they didn't right now? Ooh, I think there's a, there's a number of them, but uh, you know, we're, we're about three years into this platform shift of AI yeah. coming into market. So over the next five to seven years, you'll see how people will learn what is needed. Uh, but I think one of the biggest misconceptions I've, I've seen, and it was hard for me almost to believe, but I've, I've seen it in practice and I've heard it, is that uh, business executives can easily think that AI is the chat in the cloud. Mm. Because when you talk to them about, well, you know, the AI has to draw upon certain data sources before it could give a legitimate answer about yeah. your customers, about your products, which makes sense to us. But the business executives, they might not necessarily know that. They just think AI is the chat in the cloud, so why invest in data? So I think that's a big misconception. Another big misconception is that these are already known, reliable systems. Mm -hmm. This is new technology which is being thrown upon the world, if you will, uh, at scale, uh, globally. Like last year, we were talking about prompt engineering. And this year, we're talking about agents and context engineering. Yes. Uh, but the, the reality is that um, a lot of scaffolding will need to be put in place in organizations, like policy scaffolding and context uh, scaffolding and quality scaffolding, before we can have like a self-driving AI in, in our organizations. Yeah, that's a very good point. And, uh, you know, another thing that I've noticed is that a lot of leaders, when they hear AI, mm -hmm. they think about... Uh, GPT mostly yeah and it's so much more as well and the fact that we do need governance over it all not just the GPT of it all yeah and it, the complexity of the ecosystem and mm. especially when they're interacting and you have agents and mm. you have this distributor model that's a lot harder to manage than it seems and like you said totally. it's based on all that data behind it speaking of which how would you define AI-ready data, because we do need that AI-ready data. We know the whole garbage in, garbage out. So, yes, we do need to have some governance over AI, but also over the data behind it. What would be your interpretation or your take on AI-ready data? There's a number of things about AI-ready data, right? So one is, uh, you talked about GD GPTs earlier, and I know we have the old AI, right? The pre-GPT, the, the machine learning. And then you have the new AI, the, the GPTs, and they become so important that now AI is equal to the LLM yeah. and the GPT. Right or wrong, that's the perception in the world. But if you look at the old school machine learning, uh, what does AI-ready AI data mean? It means you need to train your model on the data. And there's plenty of evidence that shows, okay, you need a lot of data mm -hmm. for the model to mm -hmm. be functional to a degree. But there's also plenty of evidence that says that the model improves uh, based on the quality of the data, which is, as we say in, in data land, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, so that's an example of AI-ready data, quality, whether it's for training or inference. I think another aspect of data readiness for AI is, um, you know, the types of data. We live in, you know, the data warehouse land and the data lake land, etc. But a whole bunch of data that the uh, AIs will need to draw upon is unstructured data. Yeah, like 90% of it, oh, the vast majority so of it. Your SharePoints, your Google Drives, your, you know, so many systems, mm -hmm. log files have all this unstructured data, which is definitely 80 to 90% of the world. And the AI will also need to connect with this. So getting your data ready means getting your structured data ready, as well as your unstructured and turning that into knowledge products yeah. that the AI can consume. And I think, AI-ready data also means context. So, for example, let's take two data sets, customer data sets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and they're coming from the CRM system and they're coming from the data warehouse. But you don't know anything else about it. You have no further context. So how does the AI know which of those two data sets it needs to get mm -hmm. the answer from? Mm -hmm. Without context, like 
which of those is the authoritative source, which of them is the originating source. It's always an issue with master data management. Exactly. Yeah. So who is the owner? So that context is also critical for AI-ready data, I would say. And you're seeing that come up, right? Last year, again, prompt engineering. This year, context engineering. Mm -hmm. The agent needs context. It's the metadata thing. It's the semantics. So that's also part of uh, AI-ready data. And there's a whole bunch of other things. But let's, let's stop there for a moment. I love it, yeah. You did mention unstructured data, which yep. is a, a big thing. Absolutely. And now Calibra is putting the scaffolding together to be able to help organizations manage and tackle that vast majority of data yes. too. Yes, so for us, it's quite interesting. We've been doing this now for about 17 years. We started Calibra in 2008. And what we noticed is that when the word governance came up, it was almost like structured and unstructured were separate worlds. Yep. So governance for structured data would be what we do, and governance for unstructured data would be about you know, permissions in your SharePoint, for mm -hmm. example. And they were completely separate worlds, and that was fine. But what happened with this GPT phenomenon, again, three years ago this shift started, is that uh, this is a technology that makes getting information out of unstructured data a lot more possible. Right. I mean, it wasn't impossible before, but it's just very hard to do it economically or to do it with some level of quality. And overnight that changed, right? So now we can get a lot more insights out of unstructured data, which means that all of a sudden, almost overnight, every CDO, every data office, every chief data and analytics officer, every CIO, CTO is now dealing with a whole bunch of questions mm -hmm. around unstructured data. Like how do we feed it in the agent? How does this work with my RAG and my MCP and a whole bunch of other things? But all of a sudden, overnight, that dam broke about unstructured data. And now many data professionals are running around. How do we tackle this problem? Yeah. So we have partnerships in unstructured data. And then we said, well, we have to also make uh, a move ourselves. And then we acquired uh, DZ Labs about six months ago. And it was quite interesting when we met those guys for the first time. Then they said, well, we want to be like the Colibra for unstructured data, unstructured data governance. <laughs> like, well, that's great. Because good match uh, already. Yes, yes, <laughs> um, and it's it's quite uh, coincidental. Also, in the beginning of this year, uh, we came out with our updated company vision, like our view on the market, and what we came out with was unified governance, um, which is data governance and data quality go in the same platform, right? Which is um, you know structured and unstructured, and mm -hmm. a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's quite funny because at the same time in Q1 of this year, Gartner came out with their Magic Quadrant, the first time they have a Magic Quadrant for governance, uh, and that's immediately data and analytics governance, so immediately in, in line yes. with our vision, so we're like, yes. great. Absolutely. But essentially for us, this, is, this has been the year about unified governance, and structured and unstructured fits really well into that. And I love that because you're then applying the same best practices and principles yep. from unstructured, from structured to unstructured data, yep. but of course with different uh, methodologies as well. Absolutely, and there's also things that you need to do different or things you need now need to do new things. For example, the way that we look at this unstructured data problem, we say, well, first let's figure out maybe what these files and documents are, right? Maybe they're contracts, maybe they're, uh, you know, mm -hmm. loan origination, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Let's figure out what they are. Second, let's figure out whether there's any type of sensitivity to the contents of yeah. those files. Yeah. So we classify the type, classify the type of personal information in there, yes or no, sensitivity, and so on and so forth, uh, to the point that you start building a semantic layer. And that semantic layer is almost like your, your company's ontology or a piece of it, or your, your company's semantic model. Mm -hmm. And the technology will actually, you know, human in the loop, start to create that for you on the basis of the unstructured yeah. data itself. Yeah. So it looks at the document and it tells you, well, this is party, this is contract, and it might be related. So now you can actually start to edit them as a human being to say, well, let me tweak the semantics a little bit. But you can also start to then applying those tags on the content. And what comes out of that funnel is not just a data product, but a knowledge product, which is ready for you know, a human to interpret it, Love it, but also an agent to consume it. Love it. That's amazing. Well, thank yep. you so much for uh, sharing your thoughts on this and telling us a little bit about what's to come, what's already there. And uh, until next time, let's keep putting the lights on data. Thank you, Sting. See you later.